Good afternoon, everyone. We'll give it another minute or so um, before we get started, but welcome. I'm Jennifer Coleman. I am the Director of Student Facing Programs and Products at the Technology Center and I want to welcome everyone today. Uh, we, we know that your time is um, tightly scheduled potentially right now in support of your students and our students across the system. And we wanted to offer this webinar to show how you can leverage my path to help with some of the student services that you may be uh, needing to implement in an online fashion in light of the COVID-19 shelter in place orders and the changes that have happened in recent weeks. Uh, we have our team here at the Technology Center um, presenting today. Our Director of Enabling Services, Andy Newman is here, along with, I believe, our three college relationship managers. I encourage you to ask questions in our chat as they come up throughout the presentation and we have our support team that will either answer your question in chat or if it's something that takes a longer uh, contact or needs to lead to follow up, they will make sure that you end up getting that information that you need. So we welcome you, uh, we encourage questions and we encourage those of you who may already use my path to assist in answering those questions as well. Uh, today's agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about overarching technology efforts through the Tech Center during the, um, the switch to online teaching that has happened and, and online student services. We're going to talk about the MyPath document gathering service, which will allow colleges to collect documents you may not always have access to. And then we'll talk a little bit about our rules engine and advisor cards and reminders that can be utilized and talk about how co uh, colleges are currently utilizing that to outreach to students um, and make sure that we get your questions answered. So let's move into some general information. The Technology Center has been uniquely positioned to assist colleges during the switch to an online environment for instruction and student services. We are a virtual distributed organization. So we didn't have any downtime moving our activities to an online environment. We were already there. So what we did is jump in and look at how we could support all of you as you were moving to those environments yourself. So we've had a number of different materials that have been put together outlining specific support that we can provide. We've also assisted some of our colleges with general IT functions, um, trying to fast track some adoptions of products to be able to support student services during this time. And above all, trying to make sure that our college relationship managers are communicating with all of you and getting you what you need in light of all the changes that you've been facing. And we know it's a stressful time and, and our goal is to make sure that things are stabilized and stable as we move through services to students during the remainder of this semester into summer. And we are also having conversations at the Technology Center about what fall will look like for both applications and onboarding using my path. So we've paused our non-critical releases uh, so that we're not impacting your teams locally. We will have a release coming up for CCC Apply um, that was put in pilot just before everything was paused. And so we are working to make sure that those updates are communicated regularly and that we have um, information readily available to provide to all of you. Um, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Andy to talk a little bit about our college relationship managers um, and their role during this time, and then we'll move forward. Oh, hold on, let's get Andy unmuted here. 
Okay. Take it away, Andy. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And I do appreciate the new security measures that are available in Zoom uh, to prevent uh, Zoom bombing. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much. So much of the uh, the effort that you are all doing as colleges to assist the, the uh, your departments and the students with communication around COVID-19 and coronavirus, uh, the enabling services team within the tech center has uh, put together and done some outreach um, to, to gather a, a list of resources, which I will put in the Slack, or excuse me, in the, um, in the chat screen now. Uh, give me just one second. Which has a list of um, resources available. You may already have some of these, um, but if you're building a, a, a COVID card within my path, or just need some of these resources to add to other communication efforts that you're doing, this might be a useful link. We've also been working with many of the colleges that already have my path on plans to build out a, a, a COVID communication card. And one of the things right now that we're very pleased with is that the adoption of my path has is, is continued to grow very, very quickly. Uh, this past week, we uh, hit a, a major milestone. We now have 50 colleges um, within the CCC that are now adopting the MyPath solution. And a lot of that stems around all the functionality and all the different things that MyPath can do. And it's, it's you know very, very power, powerful flexibility to allow things like building a COVID card uh, in, in very, very short order to be able to uh, uh, meet those types of needs. Uh, the other thing is, is right now is a great time uh, to be expanding or considering my path, not only for these types of communication channels, but also as you're considering things like how to handle and manage online orientation and move that orientation information um, into your SIS completion area, you know, which will be coming soon. Uh, the document gathering, which Beth will be talking about here shortly. So this is hopefully going to be a valuable uh, you know, 45 minutes or hour of your time today. And there's just a few of the highlights of the things that we've been working on for your behalf. I've also mentioned at the very beginning of the chat, the email address, crms at cccTechCenter.org. If you don't know your current college relationship manager by name, you can simply send an email there and the, the right person, either Monica Matusik, Monica Zalikat, or Warren Whitmore will reach back out to you um, as, as uh, related to your college. So that's a quick and easy way to get some assistance about my path or any of the solutions from the chancellor's office through the tech center uh, that are available to you. Jennifer, back to you. Yes, and if you have questions after viewing this um, upcoming part of the webinar, and you'd like to talk to representatives from colleges who've already done this work, um, we can make those connections via our college relationship managers as well. So feel free to reach out with that request also. Um, now I'll go ahead and we'll get to the next slide here. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Mike Crusoe, our product manager for MyPath to talk about our document gathering service. Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, so I'm happy to talk to you guys about this feature today. It's something we've been working on for a while. Um, it's been released and is now available to uh, any college using MyPath. Um, and the timing of it really actually um, was, uh, ended up being a pretty good thing that we released it when we did because we think it can be a major help for colleges right now uh, due to you know, campus closures and things like that. So as everybody knows, obviously, um, campuses are all pretty much in a state of, of closure. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, local processes around accepting student applications um, and things like that have, have come to a halt. Um, we still need to be able to uh, help process some of those things. And uh, one of the things that, that we know is that um, colleges need to collect certain types of documents from, from students, especially incoming students, uh, in order to support their, you know, all their different local workflows. Um, we know that, uh, especially for the uh, international application, um, that there are a lot of different types of like residency forms and, and, and things like that 
that need to be collected. And, and they were a problem even when things were normal, right? I mean, we, we actually built this feature in response to uh, requests from this, the international CCC apply community um, who were having a lot of trouble collecting various types of documents in an organized way. Um, and, and that was back, back when campuses were open, right? And so now that they're closed, um, this is going to become an even larger problem. And we hope that MyPath can actually help you to solve for some of that. And the way that we do that is by allowing MyPath to now prompt students to upload files from within the, the onboarding process. Um, we'll actually show you a little demonstration of how this works in a little bit. But uh, as, as you guys may or may not know, um, the, the MyPath user experience is really centered around a prescriptive kind of step-by-step -step, um, uh, like onboarding uh, process where you tell a student who has just completed the, the application uh, to college, you know, here is the first thing I want my new, my new students to do. Here's the second thing I want my new students to do. Um, and you can actually now configure those steps to prompt a student to upload a file that you're requesting. Um, additionally, you know, we want to make sure that we're helping to kind of uh, stem that issue where students are applying and then never showing up for enrollment. And one of the, one of the uh, features we have um, to, to help with that is to allow MyPath to automatically remind students when they have unfinished tasks uh, to be completed. And so we'll obviously allow you to trigger out those automated reminders, which are delivered by email or by text message, um, depending on the student's preferences, of course. Uh, we can actually use those automated reminders to remind them that they have uh, a document request waiting from the college. They can come to my path and complete that. Um, and of course, you know, our favorite feature of my path is, of course, the rules engine. Um, that's the way that we're able to create a very customized pathway for our students based on the facts that we've learned about them, predominantly from the application. Um, and so you can actually ensure that you're only prompting certain types of students to, to provide certain types of documents. So for example, you might need a specific kind of document from a person that you know is a veteran. And so you can prompt only those types of students to provide that type of document. Um, it might be that the, you, have, you have certain types of students or certain students that need to provide like childcare documents or residency forms if they came from the international application. These are all totally possible by using the rules engine. Um, and we'll go over that with you if you decide to turn this feature on and want some help implementing it. Um, and then the, the other side of that same coin, you know, on top of prompting a student to provide the file um, is to actually then go ahead and deliver the file to the college. And so we leverage a technology called Amazon WorkDocs. Um, the tech center will actually provide you access to this technology. There's no cost involved. Um, and we'll allow you to do things like view all of the files that your students have uploaded. Um, you can actually uh, automatically tag files with certain categories so that when they show up in Amazon WorkDocs, uh, you can easily filter down to only look at a certain type of form. You can, of course, search by, by different users. Um, and the search actually is powerful enough to search within the contents of documents as well if you're looking for something very specific. So with that being said, I'm actually going to drop my screen share here. Um, and we're going to um, have Beth go ahead and uh, give us a quick demonstration of what this looks like. All righty, one moment here. I'll share my screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to act like I'm a student logging into my path at Barstow College. First, I'll open it up in an incognito window. As a student, the first thing I must do is sign in. So I click on the gold sign in button here. Let me go ahead and grab my login information. I'm going to log in first as a high school student. This will take just a moment to load here. Now, because I'm a high school student, I'm going to first focus on this high school student's card where I have the capability to read some information about the concurrent student enrollment process. And I also have the capability to take a look at orientation, but this is what is worth focusing on. This is the enrollment recommendation form. It must be completed both with a parental signature and a principal signature. Now I've got the capability to download that document. So I go ahead and choose the download button here, determine where I want to save it. Maybe I want to save it on my desktop so it's easy to find. Then I can go ahead and take a look at this information, but in all honesty, I've already filled this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I'll close this tab as well. Now what I can do as a student is upload my signed form. 
So I've got a little note here indicating that I've got to make sure I have both of my signatures. Now I choose a file and figure out where to uh, upload it from. And where I have it saved is in my Barstow folder. And this is Julie Walters. And this is her concurrent enrollment form filled out. It's in the process of uploading. We've got a progress indicator here. Uh-oh, we have an error. Let's try that again, one moment. Nope, there's an error with this file. It's oh, it already it's, exists, I see. Yeah, just change the file name. So one of the things that we attempt to do to prevent um, students from running into issues is we don't want them, of course, uploading the same file multiple times. So on top of actually scanning each file for viruses and harmful contents, um, we will actually prevent students from uploading, you know, many copies of the same, the same file, the same file name. Thanks for that noteworthy information. All right, so we've got uh, an upload success. We can go ahead and exit out of the advisor card. Now let's go and take a look at it from your school's point of view. So what we want to do is get into Amazon WorkDocs and you'll be presented with the name of your folder here. It's by MIS code. So for Barstow College, their MIS code is 911. And when I look at this file, I see that a number of different students have uploaded documents. So this is the student's CCCID. And we use the CCCID rather than the name because of course student names can change periodically, right? They get married, they get divorced, that sort of thing. But what I can do is go ahead and click on a specific folder Take a look at the documents that are in it. This will take just a moment here, I think. Doesn't seem to be uploading. Let's go back it's, and help. It's there. I think you just need to refresh it. There we go. There you go. So we've got a document here. Now, mind you, this isn't the, the correct document. It looks like a, a student put their DD214 in the high school concurrent, and that's going to happen, but you'll at least have the capability to go ahead and take action on this document. So you could go ahead and choose to share it or download it. If I go back to Amazon Docs, I have the capability to use that tag indicator that Mike was talking about. So I can look for HS, anything HS related. And being as I have a number of different folders that I personally have access to as an administrator, I'm going to see a number of different HS noted documents. I can also look for DD214. And what's handy about this is different folks that you have working in different departments, one who's working in veteran services, they can look for documents that relate to their workflow, such as a DD-214 for everything veterans, and someone else that's in admissions and records, and they're handling all of the student concurrent, concurrent enrollment forms, they can look for anything concurrent and find the documents that are relevant relative to their workflow processes. So it, it's wonderful because departments will have the capability to use a search feature, Something else that's also very nice is every single document that's uploaded by a student also has the student's CCCID attached to it. So you can make no mistake on what document for what student you're looking at. That's a very handy feature. And that's Amazon Docs in a nutshell. I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And Mike, if I could ask you to proceed to the next slide, that would be perfect. Yeah, let me just uh, go ahead and pull this back up again. So let me share my screen. Maybe we'll go ahead and present. So for those of you on the phone, um, Mike has noted in the chat that users can upload files that they have stored. And if they're on a mobile device, they can take a picture of the form and upload that uh, as part of this workflow. Yeah, that's, that's so nice and so handy. And when thinking about getting ready to use Amazon Docs, there are some planning and implementation considerations that 
should probably be taken into account. One, determining what person or persons are going to be accessing the Amazon Docs platform, maybe one person per department, one from admissions and records, another one maybe from financial aid or international student processing or veteran services. It might also be handy for separate mailboxes to be set up because Amazon Docs has the capability to send an email notification to someone when a student uploads a document. So it would be really handy to have a separate email box just for that purpose so, so things don't get missed or your email box doesn't overflow. Also developing categories, AKA tags, document tags, so you're able to better categorize and organize your documents once they've been uploaded. Next, defining what documents will be downloaded by students. Maybe it's more than fillable forms. Maybe you also want to share with them a student checklist or some other handy information that can help them in their academic career. And then documents that are going to be uploaded from students. Those are the ones that are going to need those little tags or categories assigned. Once your documents are received, then what? It might be worthwhile to spend a little time figuring out what your workflow processes are going to be and also determine whether or not those documents might be moved to some other central document repository. And then things to think about from the implementation side of the house is defining which advisor cards within my path will have downloadable documents and uploadable document capabilities, making sure that whoever is going to be accessing Amazon Docs can also access that new email box that was created. Make sure that those people can view the documents in Amazon Docs as they should be able to. Test any workflow processes that you've got developed. If you're gonna move documents to a, a separate repository, make sure that that process is successful. And as we go through these processes, things change. You, you discover a better way to do things. So continuous improvement equals continued success. I wanna take a quick moment and just reiterate something that we did mention earlier too, um, which is that we obviously know that you have a lot of different kinds of students who have very specific needs applying to college. Um, and this uh, uh, document collection service, when combined with our rules engine, will allow you to create a very streamlined onboarding platform. You can prompt only certain types of students to provide you with certain types of documents. And what that'll do is it'll provide an experience that is then tailored to that student's needs without also uh, sort of impacting students who don't need to do those kinds of things by wasting screen real estate, you know, giving them steps, you know, that they can skip those kinds of things. You should keep it a very streamlined and tailored experience for all your students. Um, so with that said, uh, please continue to go ahead and ask questions in chat and we'll do our best to get to those as quickly as we can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next thing we wanted to talk about, um, which is something that Andy had mentioned kind of at the top of the presentation around uh, a new card. Um, I'm going to take a second really quickly to explain to folks who may not know what a card is. So my path is uh, predominantly an onboarding platform, right? That's really the, 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 the niche that it fills, the need that it solves um, for colleges. We know that a lot of students apply to college and then that uh, many of them do not then uh, show up for enrollment or whatever the next steps are. And that is because there has uh, historically been kind of a gap in the user experience between when a student submits the application and when they either receive notification of what the college wants them to do next uh, or are provided access to whatever it is the college needs them to do next, et cetera, et cetera. My path can actually fill that gap because they can take over the minute that they, that they submit the application. They don't need to you know, get a different set of credentials or anything else. Um, they can continue on and, and, and interact with an onboarding platform that has been configured by and is branded for the college that they're applying to. Um, so with that being said, the, the way that we deliver that onboarding experience is through a series of, of tasks that are categorized into what we call advisor cards. So when you implement and configure my path, you say, here are groups of tasks that I want my new incoming students to complete. Um, so it could be that the first set of tasks is related to viewing orientation material. It could be that the next set of tasks is related to reviewing the course catalog. I mean, really, it's totally up to you guys in terms of like what you're calling them, how you're describing them. Um, what the, the tasks are that you're presenting to the students and where they point. It can be stuff that you put in my path. You can build very easily um, kind of pages within my path using a very simple Microsoft Word like tool, or you can point those links externally and have them, you know, consume content from outside of, of my path. But um, it is 
at this point in time, given everything going on with campus closures and all of the information that we need to disseminate to our students around uh, the coronavirus and sort of the unique situation that those students are, are finding themselves in, because it's probably not likely that many of your students have applied to your college in a situation where the college is shut down and is, uh, is inaccessible you know, to, to be visited in person or oftentimes has impacted phone support hours and things like that. So what you can actually do, and Beth will show you this as well, is take the opportunity to, uh, within that onboarding process, create a coronavirus information card. Again, you can call it whatever you want. You can put whatever resources you want there. Um, and, or you can choose to follow the template that um, our enabling services team has put together and provide all this information to, uh, to your new and incoming students. So Beth, um, I will stop my screen share again. You can go ahead and take it away. While we're making that switch, I see that Christina has her hand raised. Christina, do you have a question? Okay, we'll come back to that. Go ahead. All righty, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And what I'm going to show is the Imperial Valley Advisor card that we created. I'm gonna turn up my volume on my speaker to make sure that you're able to hear. And let me go ahead and play this one moment, please. This is a new advisor card we created for Imperial Valley. It's called the Coronavirus Information Updates Card. On it, we have information that is published at Imperial Valley College. Lots of good information here. We have information from the California Department of Public Health. Information from the Chancellor's Office. And information published on Imperial Valley Facebook page. We can do the same for you if you desire. And that's it in a nutshell. And we absolutely can do the same for you if you desire. If you want uh, other information from other county services or city services, we could publish that as well. And with that, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Yeah, so um, really the, the power of this is on top of, of kind of giving them sort of a step-by-step -step tour through the information that you want them to consume. It's really the timing of the ability to deliver this information if you think about it, a student who's just applied to college um, is kind of in a position where, especially given you know, the impact to support services and all those kinds of things, um, they may not understand everything that's going on or how it is impacting the college or what is available to them to help. And so to give them access to this information, literally the second that they click, you know, submit application to college, you know, they'll have access to this. And it will actually be shown to them as step one or wherever you put it in your process, obviously, but potentially as Step one, the first thing you need to do as a, new as a new applicant, as a new recent applicant, is consume this information about coronavirus and how it's impacting our college and how we can help you. Um, you know, that really is the power, right? You have the ability to get to these students right away. You're not relying on them to open some message in their email inbox, you know, that might get buried or sent to spam or whatever else. Um, you can get this information to them right away and help them, you know, be successful in college given all of the challenges that we're dealing with as a system right now. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again, although the only slide left to share is actually the closing slide. So with that being said, I think that is a lot of the content we are hoping to share with you today. Um, Jennifer, please feel free to- um, Yeah, do you wanna talk a little bit about the nudging um, capability if a student is presented with an advisor task and doesn't complete or if there's something that they need to finish? Yeah, sure. So. As we talked about earlier, you know, one of the things that, that my path is primarily helping to address is the number of students who apply and then don't proceed to enroll. Um, that happens for a number of reasons. Again, we think it's because of a large gap or we think a large contributing factor to it is that gap in the user experience between the submission of the application and, uh, you know, them receiving instructions for what they need to do next. And so as a result, we have actually built in a communication system within my path that will be able to trigger out um, emails, um, it'll be able to send SMS text messages, um, and it will be able to also send messages to what we call the MyPath inbox, which is just an inbox within the MyPath platform itself um, that really serves as a place for them to get messages you know, um, on their screen right after they access MyPath following the application. Um, and the automated reminder functionality that's built into that um, can be toggled on, and what it will do is it will trigger out messages to students um, across all of the mediums that they've opted into, right? So we're never gonna send a text message to a student who is not expressly told us, please send me text messages. 
um, when, a, when a task goes um, 24 hours, uh, 48 hours, and then a week, um, we will trigger out a message you know, uh, to the student reminding them to come back and engage with it. And of course, if they do come back and they finish that task, they will not then receive another reminder for it. They will only receive reminders for whatever the next uh, task is in sequence that they have left unfinished. Uh, we don't spam them with, with messages for all unfinished tasks, only whatever the next one is. Um, so uh, again, you know, we hope that, um, it's, that my path's position kind of following the application, um, you know, on top of being an excellent onboarding platform, we think, uh, uh, sort of sets it up to be a pretty prime place to deliver uh, coronavirus related information because it's a place that you can guarantee your students are going to be able to get to. Um, and it's also integrated with the application, which means that they will go there right after applying automatically. Um, that's, so that's once, once you set up my path, um, when a student, um, when a student completes the application and hits submit, they're given a screen that says, congratulations, you've submitted your application. Here are your next steps and you click through to my path. So via the single sign on capabilities, the student is directed to my path, the home screen that you saw actually in one of the videos, you saw the, the home screen that has the advisor task cards um, on there. And those are set up by the college. They have customizable tasks and content and all those kinds of things, but it becomes a seamless experience for the student. Um, and there are a couple of different ways to tie to, to CCC apply. Uh, either you can actually direct students to my path first, which some colleges have opted for, so they can do career exploration. Uh, we have our career coach tool that integrates with them as well. They can also go after apply uh, so that it is that workflow that we just talked about and um, then there is, um, so my path does leverage the data that is entered for CCC Apply, especially the needs and interests page. If a student and indicates that they are a veteran or something like that, need childcare, are interested in financial aid or, or other types of questions that appear um, in Apply, or if they have certain criteria met in Apply, that can direct the advisor tasks that they see and so that's part of the rules engine that Mike discussed. Um, that can all be customized for your college and what your, your college offers. Um, and so this is kind of a suite that we're offering in terms of continuing that student path, um, making sure that once they enter the path via CCC Apply that they know what steps are next. My favorite quote comes from one of our colleges uh, who a counselor said, Literally every student who applied up until we got my path would say, I applied, what's next? And she said, now I have the answer. It's right there in my path and it's delivered to them seamlessly and immediately upon application. And so what I like to talk about with my path is that it allows college interactions with our staff whose time is very limited, counselors who have very high student to counselor ratios. It allows them to interact with students on those areas that require much more um, high touch hands on specific kinds of conversation and information while my path can handle things like how do i find this specific form or how do i locate this thing um, what's my next step so instead of having those questions take up the time of, of the staff that and counselors who are so um, impacted already, you can change the, their focus to be that higher level um, contact with the students. Yep, and, and to just to, to supplement that, it's worth noting as well that, that students gain access to this onboarding platform before the college has even necessarily processed the application data locally. So there is no interruption in the student's experience when they decide to apply, they finish the application, they can immediately begin the onboarding process in my path. There's no need to wait, you know, hours or days even sometimes for the, the college to process that data and send out notifications and things like that. Um, one of the things we haven't covered, for those of you who are interested and have additional questions, our CRMs are happy to help. I will say that we can get a college up and running on my path in a couple of weeks um, is our record. I think our record is like 10 days or 14 days. Um, don't quote me on that because they'll come back and tell me that's not, you know, it was 16 days or something like that. But it's a couple of weeks to get a college live on my path. And as um, Beth mentioned, we have some, a lot of our advisor tasks, we have templates that colleges can leverage. So you're not creating content from scratch, you're leveraging 
um, work that's already been done. We have a uh, work plan that gets put in place and um, immediately our, our enabling services team, our implementation specialists jump in and assist your colleges with getting everything set up. Students know to go to my path after applying on CCC Apply because in the back end, that's where they're directed. So if your college is live on my path and um, you have the, the path in place, a student clicks submit application and the next page that they see as a landing page is no longer, hey, uh, you've congratulations on applying, wait for contact from our college, you'll see an email or something along those lines. Then the page that they see is, congratulations, here are your next steps. And so that's a seamless uh, transition for the student. They don't have to um, find my path, it's pre presented to them upon application. Yeah, Jennifer, do you wanna talk about uh, the expensive cost of this solution? Yes, so um, for, for reference, we are offering my path combined with apply as it's described with all the functionality you've seen today for the low, low price of $0 to implement and $0 for subscription costs going forward at this point. Um, we are happy to answer your questions, put you in touch with people to get your questions um, answered. The advisor cards, um, my path is a web interface. Um, and in terms of what students see, that's the, the interface that they see. So um, Jazzy, I know you've got several questions. I wanna make sure that they all get answered. So if you can uh, indicate which college you're from and we'll make sure that our CRM your CRM reaches out to you and we get those um, questions answered. We also have a couple of uh, demos that are available that show the MyPath experience. So here we have focused on these two specific functions within MyPath. We have a couple of short videos, one's 11 minutes long. It shows the entire student journey and getting on board with MyPath. Um, and Beth has some additional resources as well. So if you're interested, um, we actually had one college, we did this demo to a user group and some additional people who were interested a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we had one college step forward and say, we want to get this up and running in three weeks. Our fall enrollments will be starting, our fall application cycle will be starting, and we want this up in front of students at that point in time. So our team in enabling services is working to get that college up and live in three weeks. So um, we're happy to assist with that. The videos are located um, on our website and, and um, Mike, can you post the link or, or um, Beth, can we get the link to the videos the, in the webinar recordings? So we'll get that link posted. Um, so if a student can access my path before their application is processed, can they get credit for viewing the online orientation or would they have to wait for their application to get processed first? Um, if your workflow puts my path before the application, it's still all of the student activity is still tied to that student's record. So they still create an account and log in. And so um, it would all tie back to that student's record. Um, this one is about the document gathering service. How is the information secured if they're uploading documents and IT is not involved? Um, Cheryl, we had a couple of links posted about security within Amazon Docs. Um, work docs, but we can make sure that that gets um, taken care of as well. ESL support for my path is currently under um, in process. Um, we are actually starting with CCC apply and open CCC our account tool. Um, though the release that's coming up, hopefully fingers crossed in the next few weeks um, for CCC apply provides internationalization and specifically support for Spanish translation. And we are working on what that looks like going forward for other potential language support. Um, and my path will follow. So we started with apply, that's gonna be going live soon. And my path is coming up um, in the discussion as a work plan item for the next fiscal year. Um, there are always, because it's a web page, you can have your browser settings set um, depending on how things are set up um, that can you know provide some support but we are aware of the need to support ESL students and are working through that 
Um, Mike has posted the link where you can find the webinars, uh, videos, recordings. Um, the platform accessible for screen readers. So all of our tools at the tech, tech center go through um, extensive accessibility testing and are currently meeting all the requirements of WCAG um, 2.0 AA. And that's something that every release that goes out on my path has all of the testing done for accessibility. Um, similarly with our partner, if we have third party plugins, if you will, um, they have to go undergo the same level of accessibility testing. Um, completion of tasks self-reported by the student, they are actually um, tracked so, within the system. Yeah, so actually I'll, I'll handle this one, Jennifer. So okay. there, it, it kind of depends a little bit on, on which task we're talking about. So if it's consuming a piece of content, generally that's just self-reported and the system will automatically consider that step to be complete once the student has visited that content page. But for other things like um, uploading a document, the system obviously knows uh, when a document has been, has been uploaded by a student and we will not mark tasks like those as complete until the requested document has been uploaded and provided. Um, worth noting is that the, the step associated with document upload will actually not be marked complete until not only has a student provided the file, but the file has also cleared the virus scan and been delivered to the college. So that's the point at which uh, we will consider those steps to complete. I'll also take a second to plug one of the major pieces of work we're doing right now alongside the team that does Project Glue. Um, we are working on um, our first set of SIS integrations um, with more to come. Um, and what the, what the reason why that's applicable here is because we'll actually be able to tie um, step completions within math to uh, data changes within the SIS and vice versa as well. So we can, for example, if you would like to use CCC MyPath as your orientation platform, um, we can write to your SIS, uh, you know, once the student has completed all the tasks available, uh, it, you know, that are orientation related in my path and say, hey, this student has completed orientation. Um, similarly, it will work in the reverse direction as well. So you can use my path to prompt um, students when, uh, like, let's say, let's take the ed plan, for example. So you'll have like, um, let's say you're using like Hobson's to do your ed plans. Um, your SIS will know, uh, you know, based on that integration, whether the ed plan exists for a given student or not. And you can tie the MyPath status for the ed plan to that SIS field and drive notifications based on that. So MyPath will know, hey, this isn't complete yet. We'll use our reminder system to prompt the student to go to Hobson's and create that ed plan. And then once the SIS is updated to say, hey, this ed plan has been created, we'll stop sending those reminders out and we can actually check that box in MyPath as well. Um, so there are a number of different kind of ways and flavors that we handle our task completions for students right now. Um, and we're continuing to try to make that system more robust via integration as well. So a note on um, a couple notes. One, the webinars were recorded several months ago. They are still current in terms of information. So they show uploading um, in the fall and I believe summer of last year. Those are still current and will provide all of the general information on the functionality within my path. And again, within the upload for the document gathering service, all files are scanned for viruses. So I know that we're extra aware of security factors now that everyone's moved to a virtual environment and we want to make sure that um, that we are making that clear that we are scanning those files so we're not allowing students to or other bad actors to deliver things to your systems that could cause additional problems. Any other questions from anyone? Um, I know there's a the chat's been busy. We encourage you to continue reaching out and asking questions. Um, this was, as I mentioned, kind of a snapshot of some of the functionality within my path, um, but there is a fair amount behind this as well. And we will make the recording available uh, going forward. So if you want to refer back to it or um, if you have colleagues who were unable to attend and you want to share it with them, we're happy to, uh, we will post that so that they can link, link to it as well. Um, so with that being said, we hope that we've answered some questions about how to leverage this tool. Uh, we do aim for the seamless student experience between application and ultimately enrollment. Um, just as an additional side note, we've been tracking data with use of my path and we are seeing in some cases one college uh, between ccc apply and my path 
student engagement is as high as 85% um, with students submitting their application and then completing tasks within my path. So it's really grabbing them and getting them started. And so we hope that we can assist with some of the challenges that you may be facing now, given the, the move towards the online student services that we're seeing. Um, the PowerPoint, I believe that will be also sent out with the recording and made available to uh, registered participants. So you'll see kind of a closing uh, email with our uh, notification system that will include that information. So I encourage you to reach out if you have any questions and we're happy to help and uh, good luck in the months ahead as we navigate the completely unprecedented world that we're in. And uh, we are here to support you as we know student enrollments are going to climb in the fall and the demand on our systems is going to be even greater than it has been. So um, we're here to help and we encourage you to reach out with your with your questions. So thank you so much to everyone for attending. I hope you have a great afternoon and uh, let us know if we can help you adopt my path or get your other questions answered. Have a great day. Thank you all. Bye bye.